Greetings fam, this is Will of Shile Kun Inc. And today I'm going to use my thermometer to see how hot this compost pile is getting. Now please keep in mind that here in Stone Mountain, Georgia, it's about 37 degrees. And this compost pile, this thermometer, look how it's, it's shooting up into the orange, which is between 100 and 130 degrees. And it's, go, it's getting ready to go into the red, which is from 130 to about 160. And um, it, it, it's really, really a good thing that it's heating up like this. And my secret weapon is coffee grounds, okay? I have a lot of leaves in here, but I have a lot of coffee grounds. I, I, I don't have enough green, like, you know, grass clippings or anything like that because unfortunately it's it's the winter time almost and therefore you know don't have a whole lot of that but um coffee grounds you know got plenty of that stuff so one of the things i want to talk about um today is what you know what i actually you know put into um the compost heat you know um, i put um some wood shavings and, and and trimmings and that's like the first layer as you know it's you know we layer like a lasagna then i put some leaves that's a, another layer and everything you know whether it's leaves or the uh, wood chips we want to water it and um don't not over water it but you know they say make sure it's like a wet sponge that's some old compost that i put in there and that is some uh blended up food scraps, kitchen scraps like eggshells, celery, onions, um, potato peelings, all kinds of stuff that I put in there. And when you grind it up, grinding up the food does, and blending it up does two things. It allows the items to compost much faster and it does not allow vermin to have quote unquote takeout at the local compost restaurant, okay? Um, because possums, rodents, and raccoons like to take their food home to eat it. They don't like to ingest it while they're at the, the, the compost restaurant. So by grinding it up into small pieces like that and blending it up doesn't allow them to take it home. So you, I've never had any problems with vermin or rodents or uh, possums or raccoons or getting into any of my compost pile. Now here's the, the great ingredient, coffee grounds. Uh, they're free. You, you talk to your local Starbucks and they'll um, you, they'll give you, this is about 20 pounds, about 25, 30 pounds of coffee grounds. And um, in this particular situation, I have, I put in about 90 pounds of coffee grounds into this compost bin. And um, some other things you could add are manure, blood meal, and um, like I said, old compost and grass. But sometimes those things aren't available, but coffee grounds are really, really available. Uh, you just have to be proactive and go and get them. Um, now this is a list of, or some more information on the coffee grounds themselves. 2% uh, nitrogen by volume, which is really, really good. And um, if you read at the bottom there, it says compost specialist sustained temperatures of 140 to 160 degrees for two weeks with coffee grounds at 20% of the material by volume. So the more coffee grounds you get, the better off you are. I, I, I'm, I'm totally so, you know, coffee grounds are kind of free and they're really, really good. So some of the things that you want to kind of avoid in um, uh, your compost pile are going to be dog and cat poop, um, synthetic type tea bags, um, meat, uh, and fish, glossy paper, um, charcoal ash from like Kingsford charcoal. You don't want that kind of stuff in there. And if you do use ash, you only want to use a little bit. You don't need, you don't really need ash in your, your compost pile. Sawdust from treated wood, um, uh, synthetic fertilizer, stay away from that stuff. Blood meal is good. You know, it's about eight, nine dollars a bag. That's really, really good. It, it's 100% nitrogen. Um, and vines, like, of course, no poison ivy vines, but even like the uh, the, uh, the kudzu or uh, the English ivy 
I, I wouldn't put it in there. Even if I grind it up, I don't put it in there. It really kind of, <laughs> it just slows up the compost process. I'm sure they will compost, but you just have to be very, very careful with that kind of stuff too. And right here, this is a troubleshooting guide. Like uh, if the compost has a bad odor, it usually means that it doesn't have enough air and you need to t turn it, you know, and you have to constantly, you have to work your compost bin, you know, um, they, they say there's a such a thing as a lazy composter, but I, I don't believe there's really such a thing. You know, you might as well just, <laughs> just let nature do its work totally. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to, you know, or we're working towards making it the most effective that it can be. So you want to turn it and add dry material to it. If the center of the pile is dry, that means it's not enough water. You want to moisten and turn the pile. If the compost is damp and warm, it usually means it's too small. But, you know, I think 30, 35 feet, inches, 40 inches is good. 48 is best, but you know. Now, if the heap is, is damp or too damp and sweet smelling, but still won't heat up, then you need to add some more nitrogen. And of course, that's, you know, like we said, old compost, some manure, uh, blood meal, or coffee grounds to get it back up to, to, to snuff. And I'm just gonna leave you um, with uh, a photo of the heat of the thermometer showing the heat at 135, because I'm very, very proud of that. You know, this is the largest compost bin that I've done. Uh, my other compost bin was small. It was, it was 30, 30, 30 by 30. So even though this compost pile is only about three feet tall, it is still heating up very well. My theory is this, when you grind up the leaves and the wood chips, and you blend and grind up your food scraps, then you can have a shorter pot pile. It doesn't have to be the normal 48 inches or taller. Now, 48 inches, inches or taller is the best thing to do, but if you can't get it that tall, then if you grind your stuff up, you can still have a compost pile that heats up. So on the next video, I, I hope I can show you um, me actually turning the pile once it cools down to 80 or 90 degrees. I will also add some more nitrogen, uh, AKA coffee grounds in there so that we can get the pile cooking again. Um, alrighty, I, I really appreciate you watching. Thanks, thanks a lot and uh, peace. And I'll check you out next time, peace.